What is up, YouTube family? We are back after a uh, two-week holiday that really wasn't a holiday. But, um, yeah, we appreciate everybody for tuning in, as always. Um, you know, we don't have a ton of subs like I did on my old channel. But I, I'm seeing that some of the videos that we're doing, like the last video we did, the call, the, the soft and hard calling, I mean, it, it moved pretty quickly. Uh, I honestly think YouTube's suppressing my shit honestly, uh, because I still have the same IP address that I had, obviously, from the old channel. Uh, and I know YouTube be on bullshit like that because they don't like the shorts that I put up. It's like they don't even get fucking acknowledged. So sometimes they do. But then lately, like because that's how I built up all our views, they haven't been doing much of anything. But that last video we did, I think, is at like 100 now. So hopefully it'll keep going. And hopefully this American Bully video, uh, We'll bring in some more, uh, some more, new, some new family members to the to the channel because that that last American bully video I did on the old channel, and that was my highest viewed video, like 15, 16,000 views, and I put in a lot of subs off of that. So, um, but anyway, as you guys know, tonight we are going to discuss um, the American bully. Is the American bully a real breed? Is it a gimmick? You know what what is it? Um, you know, so, you know, as always, I, I, I throw my two cents in and then we, you know, we, we kind of feed off of that. Uh, so I'm going to start just by saying um, the American bully, the original American bully. And, and, and it's kind of sad that I have to say this, um, but as Kyan knows and a lot of other people know, when I don't say a lot of other people, a, a, a decent number of people know who really, really know dogs know that. They put the same breed together, the Amstaff and the American Pitbull Terrier, and then gave it a whole totally different name. But that was just the start of it. And, you know, obviously, Kai and everybody else know, you know, I don't really fuck with, with, with Dave like that. But um, initially, that was a good project when he was putting that together, even though it was a game line into a show line. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but... To call it an American bully, I guess, in my opinion, is kind of it's kind of stupid because it's a pit bull, it's a, it's a pit bull terrier. No matter how you look at it, it's never been genetically altered to become an Amstaff that we know of. Um, so, but originally when he was putting that dog together, I believe him when he said on that last interview that he did after that attack in London um, that he. You know, he never envisioned anything about an exotic or an XL or an XXL. Um, and, and yeah, I, 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 I definitely believe him on that 100 uh, percent. The problem with that is you started accepting them in your registry and making money off of them. So it's kind of hard to back away from that. when you've made tons of money for anybody um, in a situation like that. But we went from a solid looking dog to a toy all the way up to a mastiff type dog. And kind of, you and me know and, and other people know that there's no way in hell that you're going to be breeding game line in the show line and getting 20 pound to 160 pound dogs on their, you know, at, from from those genetics. It's just it's just not possible. So, you know, that was why I, when I was talking to someone and that's kind of how I came up with the topic. And I was telling like, you know, I don't even really feel that anything outside of the standard American bully. I really, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really don't even like that it's called that, but you know, I guess that's just my gripe about this, but anything outside of that game line into the show line probably has a very, very small percentage of any type of bulldog in it at this point, you know, in, in its current existence. Um, you know, so it's like, what are, what are we really looking at here? Um, you know, I, I know in, 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 I, I try to deep dive and step back and look and I'm like, it, it's, it's almost like they're, I don't, I mean, I guess you could look at it as replacements or they may want to think them of as better models, more sleeker models. You know, the 2013, 2014 SUV, Lexus, da, 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 to the 2015 type of shit. Whereas the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, the American Bulldog, the American Pit Bull Terrier, you know, it's like kind of like those dogs are 
in a sense, I guess some people could say, like, are you trying to replace those dogs with these bullies? Or are you trying to refine them and say that these dogs are better or they're worse? It's like there's just so many questions and confusion behind this breed that, you know, it it, it begs for interviews and, 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 and things like this. But I don't know, Kai, what, what, what's, what's your take on it? Hopefully, Paul. Oh, I think it's a complex situation. Um, I think it's a complex actual history. Um and I don't think it's as cut and dry as some people would would say. Once again, I wasn't there in the beginning, but I am very cognizant for a few decades now on how a, a traditional game dog looks, how a UKC show pit bull looks, and how an AKC show American Staffordshire Terrier and Staffordshire Bull Terrier look. And... I do feel like there were some lines of dogs in the beginning of the American Bully that were um, purebred, strictly American Staffordshire Terrier to whether UKC American Pitbull Terrier, which is basically UKC's version of the American Staffordshire Terrier. UKC, a real purebred UKC American Pitbull Terrier and an AKC American Staffordshire Terrier have a whole lot more in common than with an ADBA American Pitbull Terrier. Um, when it comes to, to looking like one another and what their function is, um, I do feel like, and, and this goes into the American Bully as a whole, I do feel like there, like I said, there were strains that were purely that for, you know, the first few generations. Um, but that, to me, that was quickly absolved by, uh, you know, the, the third, fourth, fifth generations because the popular dogs that were bred a lot did not carry traits into the American Pitbull Terrier or Amstaff look. Um, you know, you, you can, you can look and people, and, and you and I have talked about it. I'm not just singling out one bloodline, but you could look at some big name stud dogs of the day and they were crossed with bulldog or mastiff. I mean, it's just what it was and they were big names. So what you do is, you know, I'm taking a dog from this dog or a puppy from this dog. And then breeding it to the pure stuff, well, shit. Then you're seventy five, twenty five, right. and then you're you're line breeding and 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 inbreeding and stuff. And within a few generations, everything's got a drop of a few things in it. It's right. not just AKC, Amstaff, or your American Pitbull Terrier. And that and and that's how I feel. Um, and I feel like. Um, it, you know, when you say what a breed is, and this isn't, hey, I mean, I still keep a couple of my American bully stock dogs, you know, at arm's reach. Um, and I feel that when you look at like what, what classifies as a breed, I think the American bully is a breed. But I don't feel like everything that says it's an American bully is an actual American bully. It's kind of that- like it's kind of like when people say band dog. Well, me and you have our opinion of what a band dog is. But just because I take a Rottweiler to a, a Chow Chow, it doesn't make it a band dog. You know what I mean? Or a right. Rottweiler to an American Bulldog or an right. Alapaha or whatever. You know, you and I have a pretty strong, you know gauge on what we view as a tried and true band dog or old English bulldog. And, you know, when you start talking about micro bullies and nano bullies and Merle bullies and XXL bullies and XL bullies. It's a whole different ball game. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's a whole different ball game. And I mean, if, if I was to summarize how I feel about it, you, 
would make the XL American bully its own breed because it'll never look just like the standard or the pocket dogs because the breed composition is different. You can tell that. I mean, hell, most XL bullies look closer to a fancy colored Presta Canario. And I'm not saying all, but a lot more in common with that than you're talking about your standard or your pocket bully dogs. Right. Um, Yeah, no, it's a far separation. I, I think that also it could be that, and this is just me saying how I feel, I it could be that you basically had a breed that gained massive popularity before there was a homogenous look. And um and so when that gets spread across the country to every corner of the states and then it gets spread to Mexico and Canada and South America and Europe, you're never gonna get everybody on the same page on what this dog looks like. Right. And un- until there are, I shouldn't say strict guidelines, until I don't personally feel like there will be a overall consistency until there's one class for the breed. You make XLs their own breed. Just because you can't just make new classes to acclimate for dogs that are being bred. You, if you want consistency as a breed, right? Like right. I, you can't just say, you know what? There's there's hairless and long haired bullies now. Let's make a hairless and long haired breed, and and still registering those dogs, regardless yeah. of any Under the same name, right? Is still as bad. Like right. it's and and a lot of people want to blame the registry, but it's the integrity of the breeders, right? It's, I, it's a collective effort or lack of effort. Yeah, if, if you know, to, to, to put it that way. Now, I no, I definitely agree with you. I I I, I don't you know I don't know. I, I'm familiar with the original program that he did. How it got to the the pockets and the exotics and the XLs and X that I have no. You know what I mean? Like what? Because yeah. it happened like simultaneously. You know what I mean? Like there was just. The standard American bully. It wasn't even called a standard American bully. It was just an American. Actually, it wasn't even called an American bully for a while. It was still. You remember? You mm-hmm. remember seeing him in um the what's his name's books, the Stratton books, still yeah. cool, in cool and game dog books. Yeah. Um, you know things like this. They had never they had never said anything about an American bully. Um, you know these were just kind of more heftier or stockier built American pit bull terriers or. Amstead were more towards the game or the, sh- I mean, sorry, the, sh- the show look rather yeah. than the sporting look. And Kai made a great point. Um, that's just like, I got a cobra back here, a, a venomous cobra, but then they have false water cobras. I can't put those in the same category just because they have cobra in the name. They're not related. Yeah. They're not the same species. You know, they're not from the same area. One can kill you. What's up, D? And one, and, and, oh, no. and one can't, um, yeah. you know, so you can't, if there was a reptile registry, I wouldn't be able to say, oh, well, I'm going to register my false, my falsies with my forest cobras and my, or that's like even trying to, like the king cobra and all the other cobras, they're not related. King cobras are their own species. They're not true mm-hmm. cobras. So it's the same thing. Like what we saw was, this this like immediate it was like a, just a sporadic division and then the dog just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger like at the same it's doing like this at the same time it was, it was crazy and I, I didn't pay attention to it enough because it just was not it wasn't anything that i was interested in um but i just i never understood it because i'm like well why do you want to make them smaller you already have established your bull terriers why do you want to make them bigger you already have american bulldogs um so I, I I did not I looked at it from that standpoint I didn't I didn't understand what was going on, but you know it's like you said you've got all these dogs no matter if they weigh five pounds or five hundred pounds all class under the same registry under the same name so this lady walking down the street with her exotic bully walks up on a guy with an XL bully and they're like yeah we both have American bullies <laughs> you know? my wife 
we were at PetSmart. This is when we first got together, you know, six, seven years ago. And we were at PetSmart, and there was a guy walking an exotic Merle dog with clipped ears. And she said, oh, it's like so-and-so. And my dogs and those dogs look nothing alike. And I was like, don't you ever say that again. <laughs> you know? And I'm not hating on that. But when, like, when you're talking about big dogs, big dogs were a thing out west. Out west wanted big dogs. Um, you start looking at dogs like Buttheads Lights Out and King Lion. Uh, and there were big, you know, 90 to 120, maybe 130 pound dogs. Really didn't hit the east coast or down south at least that much. It, it was never really a, a big thing. Like I'd see some of them in Atlanta. Um, and there were a few breeders here and there, but the XLs kind of just took off, um, you know, within yeah, the past no, 10, sure. 10 years, I would say. I, and I'd also say the dogs I saw, you know, you know, in 05, 06 to 010 in Atlanta that were XLs, the majority of them, weren't good looking dogs um you know i didn't like and, and i'm if you see a great looking if you see a good looking xl american bully one of the most impressive canines you'll ever see in your life i've seen a couple in person and i'm just like damn they got it right but the other uh, ones standards are, are more yeah. and i see a few like really 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 nice standards that were true to the original program. I mean, I've owned them, you know what I mean? I've, I've had a pocket uh, and, I, and I've had a couple standard bullies and the standard bullies that I had, um, you know, one of them was a hundred percent razor's edge, you know, really, really nice dog, solid built, very, you know, very smart, had good drive on him. Um, and then I had a pocket dumb as hell, you know, just dumber than a box of rocks, legs this big, no drive, no protection, scared of everything, can't walk a quarter mile. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you got a, you've got the same dog under the same name, under the same registry that can't even perform the same task. Like yeah. it's it's I guess for people who are professional or dogmen, whatever title you know someone wants to give themselves, if they're really thinking, like that's very confusing. Now to your average seller and even to the average breeder. That's not even something that is being thought about. It's not, it's not yeah. a big deal. You know, it's just, it, they're just all American bullies. You know what I mean? So you go to like, you know, I've never been to American bully show, but I've seen them. I know you've been there. And it's like, it's like you go into a Staffordshire Bull Terrier show or a Presa show or a Doge de Bordeaux show. And that's all you're going to see. You know, you're going to see dogs that are slightly different, but you're going to see a lot of, a lot more consistency. And then you go to American bully show. You know, big, this long, you know what I mean? You're like, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, how many breeds of dogs do I? Oh no, it's just one breed. It's just one breed. And, and and I also think that when you look at something like the American Bully as a whole, it's it's really hard to gauge because you don't exactly know how and what breeds and what percentages are in these breeds because 15 years ago i'd say the majority of the breeds the majority of the base of the breed were akc amstaffs ukc pit bulls with a little bit of bulldog a little bit of mastiff yeah that now i i can't say that for 75 percent of of the american bully as a breed i could be wrong but I'm probably not. <laughs> you, know, you know what? It was, okay, so I almost forgot about this dog. When I was in Colorado, I did. I, I was just so bored there. Like towards the end, uh, I actually bought a. Didn't really. It was just an American bully, but it. You know, when you think of Amstaff, it's like that's what it looked like. I mean, I, you know, I saw the parents in person, and they looked like, you know, your typical AKC line. Yeah. American, you know, very nicely built, you know, 60, 65, 70 pounds max, you know, nothing that I would say, oh, that's an American bully. You know, it's just a, a, a high yeah. ball. Goal. So I, I, I bought a pup from a guy 
And, you know, I was talking to him about it and he was like, no, no, I did a DNA test on him. And the DNA test came back and they were like uh, majority Amstaff and then the rest was English Bulldog. So yeah, that's an American bully on as far as what the paperwork said. But, you yeah. know, as far as what we know, it's like when you're going back to talking about the band dog thing, what we knew to be a band dog by definition, John, John Swinford and, and uh, Carl Semenci was pit bulls in the English and Neapolitan Mastiff. So that was a band dog. You know, now that that term is, you know, just being thrown around a lot. But so, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of it's the same thing. It's like so then that's not. A standard American bully that is a Amstaff into an English bulldog, which would be an Arkansas giant bulldog, which is who we talked about. We've we mentioned this dog yeah. on the show a few times, which is, you know, never bred consistently, but has been happening for a long time since the 90s. Well, I think that the same thing happened, obviously, with the American bully and the fact that. You know, breeding an Amstaff or a Pit to a Bulldog or to a Mastiff, you're not reinventing the wheel. You're not, and I, and no discredit to anybody that does it. I've seen some amazing dogs off of both of those. But I think, you know, what you ended up seeing happening is, oh, I can breed this blue Amstaff to this blue Neo, throw papers on the puppies, and so one of the parents is right. The other one's a different breed. And I'm just going to sell them instead of for $200 in a classified, I'm going to sell them for $2,000 and promote them as the largest pit bull terriers in the land. And I think that, I mean, that's obviously what happened throughout this breed. Because if you go back on any American bully, any, uh, you know, no matter what registry, not one dog in any of those pedigrees is going to say da 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 French master. Right. You know, it's all going to have the paperwork is right, of course. It's all right. going to say American pit bull terrier, American Staffordshire terrier origin. There's not going to be any other breed on the paperwork. Now, people might say, well, Whopper, but Whopper was a paper hung. Half in, uh, half dog de Bordeaux, half American bulldog. He had pit bull papers, so you know you don't really know the percentages of what you're dealing with. It's almost like the press. Uh, like you can't look at your press and say it's ten percent dog de Bordeaux, right? But I think the difference with what happened with the press uh, is number one, the islands are a lot smaller people have a limited stock to deal with and they made one standard right, right. one standard right. if it doesn't make the cut for the standard then it can't be displayed as you know show stock right you know oh, or sure. and well and you know, you know and they i mean they, they had a slight advantage um because they literally just follow the blueprint from the 1500s which was once the once the Mahoero started losing fights to other breeds, then they started getting those other breeds and crossing it to make a better fighting dog. So that was the same thing they did in the in the reconstruction. They had some Mahoeros, they had a few of the original Presta type dogs that were left over before they became a breed and before there was a standard to use to filter out all you know the stuff from re reconstruction when it was finished, but they use the same blueprint, the same dogs that they were dealing with in the 15, 1600s, the Bordeaux, the, the, the uh, Neapolitan, uh, you know, Bulldogs and things like that. They went back and got all those dogs, put them back into the Bardino in no particular order, but you're dealing with a primitive breed like we've talked about before. So you, because the, the dog's genetics are so, uh, so stern and sturdy, like you're getting just certain things, no matter how the dog is bred, but you do see some, maybe some differences that are less subtle than others. And, you know, then they filtered that out with the however many dogs they had left over from pre-1970, which, you know, couldn't have been a lot. And those dogs obviously would get swallowed up. So it's like, you know, one thing I, I've all been wondering is if any and how much percentage of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier went into the 
pockets on down. I I I personally believe in the beginning a substantial amount. I mean, I remember going to a dog show in 06 or 07 with a buddy of mine. And I was like talking to him. I was like, there's no way these dogs don't have Dasher Bull Terry in them. Now I feel like it's probably more Bulldog. Um, but I do feel like Staffshire Bull Terrier played a substantial role in yeah, getting at some point, the, right. the, dog, yeah, yeah. the dogs, you know, just like you saw the XLs jump from 270 pound dogs to 120 pound dogs. Not saying it can't happen every fucking summer solstice, but <laughs> right, not consistent, but. but you're not going to drop a 20 inch dog down to a 14 inch tall dog on a no, not within a, not on an F1 breeding on a consistent <laughs> basis and 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 it throw it on a consistent basis. No. That being said, I don't know if uh, you know D agrees with me, but I'm a firm believer in you know Am Staff Staffshire Bull Terrier, American Pitbull Terrier, three different versions of the same breed, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, they go ahead. Just they just branched out. I mean, yeah, yeah. My understanding, I mean, a lot of football people won't admit it, but going to ADBA shows, they all came from staffies. I mean, <laughs> some people say it yeah. was first, but it, it makes zero sense that oh, um, any yeah, sort of terrier that? breed originated in the United States when right. <laughs> the terriers are from right exactly. That, that's yeah. the right. That's that's um, the that's um, always been my thing. What you just said, like, well, yeah, it, if, it's, if you it's just want to have a short version, it's like, all right, let's use common sense. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they made pits. It was just they did their own thing. It was a different breed, and then damn staffs came from pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, and but but I feel like the Stature Bull Terrier played a, a I don't know is obviously not as significant as the bulldog or the 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 mastiff breeds, but I do feel like it played a substantial role in the beginning of of the pod. Like the pug, I feel like even the, the pug and the French bulldog as well, maybe more so now, especially on the French bulldog end, definitely has got a good percentage of DNA in some of these exotic dogs. I mean, I mean I, you look at no, so, I mean, you look at those three dogs, look at the, the staffy, the pug, and the French bulldog, and then you look at those exotic dogs from the time you first started seeing them until now, because they had. They were in the beginning when I first started seeing them. They look, and I'm not saying that those dogs are functional at all, but they look slightly more like they were, they look just actually like many dogs, like many, you know, like you have Savage or Volterra is, is, is like, you know, you look at that versus uh, Amstaff and you can see, oh, the, the, you know, phenotypical similarity. So, you know, the dog's got to be related. Um, but you know those dogs kind of had some stature to them you know but then it just got worse and worse like every year the dog got smaller less leg less face you know less yeah. body but then more muscle like less body but more muscle if that well makes sense. i i also don't think that you should confuse and i'm not saying you do muscle with with the body Right, and because that's what I was saying. Muscle, right. muscle, muscle, and girth and bone are two different two different things, right? And and but I I do I do agree with you on you know fifteen years ago the dogs were a whole lot more functional, not all of them, but the majority right. of them were. Um, but you you know I hate the word evolution because what breeders do of any species isn't evolution it's genetic manipulation for uh, human beings uh you know pleasure meaning you know i'm gonna i'm gonna take this dog and breed it as extreme or as fast or as whatever highest jumping as i can can that's not evolution that's genetic manipulation for the task that you want it to compete in or you know excel in 
Um, and, and I'm sure, like with snakes, you know, a bumblebee glow in the dark ball python. That's not evolution. That's genetic manipulation. Right. That's exactly what it is. You know. Um, yeah. There's, yeah, yeah, there's, there's only. There's only mm -hmm. Right. It's only so much natural occurrence you're going to get um, with when, especially when it comes to you speak, talking about mutations in general. But there, I mean, obviously there are mutations that exist in nature. We don't see them that often because they, they, you know, they usually don't survive. But there are a few. And then those few, especially in the reptile community, have given rise to hundreds of, of colors, of color patterns. Yeah. And it's all because it's so amazing to look at. We forget or, or we don't care or we forget or we just ignore the uh, negative attributes, you know, internally and externally of, of what we're actually looking at. And I think with the American bully as well, it, you know, not necessarily even talking about anything mutated because, you know, then we're dealing with, I'm just talking about the, the general makeup of the dog and how it was bred is, like I said, it's just, it's just, it happened so fast. And then the thing now is it's still not stopping. Like, like where's the stopping point for the breed? Or, you know what I mean? Because like I said, we were talking about last show is now you can, now they're showing the hairless bullies. Well, how? How do you even, obviously we know how, but how do you even have papers on that dog already? Yeah, how? yeah. And I'm not sure, I'm not actually sure I saw the hairless bully thing. They're not actually showing them or Merle's in the show ring, but it is one of those deals. Like if I was a registry and granted, it is a business. Any registry is a business. AKC registers mix English and French Bulldogs all day long. So not, but it would take me about a week to unregister and revoke papers on any questionable stock. I mean, I mean, it would, you know, that hairless bully shit, you know, that would go, in my opinion, I, 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 you know, might, you can't be worried about if you're trying to protect the integrity of a greed or build the integrity, you have, you have to be cutthroat. Like, I'm not going to start a registry, but you have to be willing to lose friends. For sure. Because I didn't get into the you know, dogs because of friends i got in dogs because i like dogs but when you're talking about you know not enforcing the breed standard like if it wasn't in the breed originally it doesn't just pop up like uh, i mean the merle pattern that doesn't just occur right a pair a direct parent has to be that pattern right so trace the dog back to where the Merle started and revoke, revoke right. that and everything down, you know, right. but no, that's, that's, sure. yeah, you, yeah, you have to, no, you're right. Uh, I think you, you were saying that last time, like you can't, you can't, you can't make compromises for, for shit like that. Like you, you can't, you're because you're, you're compromising the integrity of the whole reason you're there in the first place. And yeah, everybody, you know, would like to make money because you know, we all got shit we want to do and need to do, but you know, if, if that if that's the route you got to go to just, you know, it's kind of like what they say. It's like, oh, you're, you're selling your soul in the, in the music industry or in Hollywood. You just like, fuck it. I want the money. So I'm willing to do whatever. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to put this dude on the burner and let him burn so that I can. You know what I mean? And that's kind of that's kind of what we see just in a different in a different aspect or different different wording is, you know, these registries have made all this money. And I think now the AKC is starting to crack down on the French Bulldogs, um, you know, but it's like, OK, yeah, but you, you guys have just made like how many millions of dollars off of registering this dog. And now all of a sudden you want to crack down. You're telling me AKC don't know the standard for French Bulldogs because I know they do. Yeah, but that's not how it works. <clears throat> like. You send them the paperwork and you use dogs that are literally registered. They're not going to let you register a, a Merle or a bald Frenchie. Somebody's using the registration name and number of a dog that actually exists or hanging the paper. So, like, is that, is that what they're doing? See, I, okay. See, I thought yeah, they were literally like, I mean, they were like, registering these dogs at under 
if, okay. if I mean, like, if there would be absolutely no reason to do this, but say I bred uh, red to ivy, I could register the puppies to, as Hennessy's. Is if there's no DNA test done, they don't know. Like, they'd just be like, okay, it's a, it's a purebred Staffordshire Bull Terrier, so registered. They can't check all these dogs. It's too many. See, I thought so. So, well, I People guess think that they like there ain't nobody sitting here managing establish a board to registry. <laughs> so I, like, think, I guess in my mind, what I'm thinking of is because you know when you get your papers, you know it usually has the color of the dog on there. So then yeah, I guess well, if, it's, it's, if, it's, if, if I if I was starting to to breed <clears throat> rural staffies. I would have to say it was red and white, black and white. Brenda so, okay, white. see that? See now that I didn't know that's what they were doing. Because like I said, yeah. I, I don't. Follow the yeah, breeds, yeah. So that, that's what they're doing. Yeah, if you okay. sat there and okay. said, "I have a Merle Frenchie," the AKC is going to be like, "Okay, well, have a blessed day. Go register with the UKC or somebody okay, so else." That's, okay, so yeah, yeah. all right. Because see, I was under the impression that AKC was like just saying, "Fuck it," you know. No, but but okay. you, go if ahead. You hang yeah. papers. Yeah, if you hang papers. You can sell to a fool like I have this AKC Merle dog because they registered it. But if you looked at that puppy's paperwork, it don't have no Merle, no bald or any other colors that ain't part. No lilac. None of that is on any paperwork. So yeah. even when you get your papers, you're never going to have papers for a Merle Frenchie or a Merle. I mean, Stafford's aren't Merle, but hopefully nobody starts doing that nonsense. But like okay. you can't yeah, register, yeah. you can't register a color that don't exist. Yeah, okay, that makes sense because that's what I was. It's thinking. not even an option on the paperwork. Right, right. See, that's what I was thinking was happening because see, you know, yeah. I I've never, you know, I don't breed Frenchies. Yeah, anything. they actually they have cold color codes for the color. So like, uh, like say, Brindle and White is what I register mine as it would be like zero zero one. Like, so you can't create some can't create some shit. To, to, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah. See, yeah, I didn't know. I thought they had a comment were accommodating these things. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm glad you what, cleared that up for me because I was very yeah, like, bred. If I were bred one of my dogs to a pit bull barrier, and I said I bred it to Hennessy, and I gave them Hennessy's registration number, they're gonna be like, okay. And then all of a sudden, you got some dogs popping up with red noses and yellow eyes and green eyes, and people going to be like, what the hell? But the AKC don't know. There's no way for them to be able to check all that. It would cost yeah. extremes amount of money to DNA test. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, they're, they're registering what 170, 170 breeds. So yeah. Now, like I said, I, I'm I was my whole this whole time I'm under the impression that motherfuckers is literally writing like Merle and Lilac and shit on these papers. Like, but <laughs> you're also turning a blind eye. I mean, I feel like there should be a police when we're talking about the AKC or the UKC there, you know, there should be a, a breed, a breed, whatever group that mm. patrols their shit. You know, honesty with the breeders is one thing, but the AKC to sit here and say that the AKC hasn't turned a blind eye. I do agree with you and you're all right about the, you know, you can't put Merle down for Staffy or French Bulldog. But to sit there and say that nobody noticed when the French Bulldog just hit the number one most registered breed right. yeah, they, they of, definitely of, of AKC for 2024. Right, right. right. Like, over the Golden Retriever after all and, those and, years. And, and, and no, it was honest, labs, but Frenchies were in the top seven, I believe, for a while. Yeah, yeah but... If you look at the, uh, I mean, do you think more purebred real French Bulldogs are being sold? Or do you think more black and tan, Merle, fluffy, red nose, whatever they call them? I mean, the, yeah, the I exotic mean, color dogs are getting sold more. It's hard to they tell who has, like, who has paperwork of these paper hung dogs. Like, 
Do you know anybody with? I don't know nobody with Frenchies, but yeah, me yeah. either. Yeah. Why yeah. I, yeah. That's why. So I, how do we know that they're coming from the AKC or people just ain't breeding well, Frenchies more? Because I think one one best of breed or something like that a couple of years ago on the uh, Westminster or the National Dog Show. So whenever that happens, people start flooding to get one anyway. Right. I think I think that there is just. I mean, there, I think there you have a separation of. And I'm not in Frenchie circles, but I know people in Frenchie circles. There are plenty of purist French bulldog people that want nothing to do with the the fancy right. colors, coat links, or patterns that aren't native to the breed. And but I I, I would just say that out of popularity and the wow factor that probably Merle and tricolor Frenchies. And the long-haired ones are probably the ones that are selling more. You know, that otherwise people wouldn't be breeding them. Well, here's a here's an interesting question. I was thinking about this listening to y'all talk. So, you know, now obviously people get these these crazy color Frenchies, right? And we're and we're, and I'm talking about your average buyer. I'm just talking about mm-hmm. the Joe Schmo or Jill Schmill who sees this dog, somebody walking in their neighborhood, and now she has to have one. So she goes and buys a Merle one. And then they get that breeding fever. You know how that shit happens. So now then they go get another dog, you know, another Merle. Now, this is someone who doesn't know shit about breeding, doesn't know shit about dogs, nothing. But these dogs, let's just hypothetically, these dogs are papered in their AKC. And let's just say one is Merle and one's Lilac. So... I guess how I get my, so what I'm getting at is since, because like I said, I didn't, I'm honestly, I've never owned an AKC dog. So I, where I've got the places I've gone, you've always just wrote the color for the dog in. Um, So for someone like that, how are they who doesn't know shit? And if you said there's no place for those colors on there. So I guess, damn, are they just taking a chance and just, you know, just lying or are they, like then, like how, how you know? I'm just thinking, just trying to think about that on the terms of someone who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, but it's like I want to make money off of these dogs. I know? don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. You know, because I'm sure it happened. You know, I doubt that everybody would do their due diligence and figure that out beforehand. But I figure that there'd be a decent amount who does. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, because I know people like this who would call the AKC. And be like, yeah, I got these Merle Frenchies here that I bred, but I don't see any Merle thing on the paperwork. You know what? You know what I mean? Like, what do I write? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I know people that will do that. Like, and them yeah, not but even they won't. They wouldn't even have paperwork to register the dog. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, because well, well basically, what I'm saying is unless like, somebody's yeah. actually doing, I mean, and then they're an idiot for seeing all, that the dog is these- checked off as black when it's Merle. All Bro, that's, dogs, that's what I'm saying. All so they these did dogs that. are AKC registered. Any other than maybe FCI, and I don't know about FCI because we're in the states. But all the Amer now, now they show them in the ABKC, but it's not the premier registry for French Bulldogs. The AKC is. So right. whenever you go on Hoobly right now and you look up French Bulldogs and just start clicking on. Merles or long hair or whatever color that it doesn't come in or pattern, they're all going to be AKC registered. Every last one of them. Yeah, no, they always are. Yeah, unless or they don't have papers at all. It's either no, you know one, one but, of one of the two, but yeah, it's never UKC, never anything else. But they're still paper hung. I mean, you 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 know, regardless right. or not, it's just like at some point well, that, that was, dog, at some point in that dog's lineage. There is something that's not supposed to be there. There, that's how it. Got, I mean, it's it's no different than the than you know the inception or not the inception, but you know, like I said, American bullies now is like every American bully on the planet Earth right now has got hung papers at some point in the pedigree. It does. Yeah, I, yeah that's what, that was the point I was kind of trying to get at was they, you know, like David was saying, like they bought the dogs from somebody who knew what they had wasn't the real shit, but they, they got these dogs with these fake papers on them and then they sold them to these people and then they went and got another one 
So now both dogs are papered and now they want to breed and register. It, I mean, that could have even been how AKC kind of had to like, you know, we got to we got to look into this shit because somebody might have called who was a novice, but had a litter with, you know, both these dogs got papers. And they're like, I don't see where my color box is on here. And they're like, yeah. what do you mean? Well, my, yeah. I got Merle puppies and I got lilac puppies, French bulldogs. You know, and then they're like, well, French bulldogs don't or whatever spill they give them. They don't come in those colors. So what do you mean? Well, I got them here and they got AKC papers to you. I'm just trying to figure out what colors to put on it. You know what I mean? So something like yeah, that, I'm see, pretty sure that something like that happened. You would get those papers from your breeder and then you right, would have right, to send right. in for the registry. And if you're, I don't know about you, Kyan, but like people always ask, like, do I get papers with the dog? Like, yeah, I'll give you the form and you could pay for your registration. And they never do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, out of I all mean, the puppies that, I had, maybe four of them are registered. And I own two. And, and, and I'll tell you what I, I do, and I, I got it from a friend of mine. If I have a litter of eight, let's just say I have a litter of eight, no matter, I will do 12 puppy registrations because inevitably I'll sell a dog that doesn't get registered and then I want to breed to it later on. And I just mm -hmm. keep, I, I, and I know people might be like, oh, that's dishonest. No, it's not. It's ensuring the legacy of what I've got going on. Because well, you're putting papers on the same dog. Yeah, I'm putting, putting papers, paper, on, I'm putting papers on a dog that was never <laughs> registered that I want to right. to. Under the same you, paperwork, right. Yeah, that you lost. Um, and and But that's what D was saying is like, you know, people go and have a litter of, I mean, I'll sell a, a puppy, he'll get the registration or she'll get the registration and never register the dog. Well, yeah. when I see the dog at fucking whatever months old, or two years old, sorry, and um, want to breed to it, and he's never sent off the papers, it's like, I'm not going to breed to the dog until I know that A, it's either registered, or B, I've got a copy, I mean, I've got a registration of that litter, and I can just register that puppy under my name, and then when I'm done registering the litter, I you know, he can give me 20 bucks for the registration. I mean, the, 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 the papers or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm pretty, when it comes to the paperwork and doing it at a due diligence and, and, and a, in an orderly fashion, I'm very anal retentive because, you know, having papers in Luau for a long time, Unless I know you, I'm not leaving the place without the, the puppy registration. Um, I, that happened to me on my third dog I got, you know, in 06 or something. And, you know, it took about a month and I finally got my papers and I said, this ain't happening again. You, you know, I, I, I'm just not going to get stuck without papers. And um, not saying it's the end all be all because it's not, but when I'm paying for papers, I expect right, the registration right. when I pick up the dog, unless it's like me and you. And I'm like, look, it'll be two fucking weeks. I'll, you know, right now, like but that. you know, people, people, I mean, that that's what happened with uh, Champa's mother um, after the initial price that was agreed on was paid, then the motherfucker. It was like, oh, yeah, well, now if you want the papers, it's going to be another thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like shit like that. Or yeah. uh, I had another female here that was supposed to be UKC registered. Her father was a grand, like a two time grand champion UKC. I mean, not that that really means shit because it's UKC. I mean, you know, it's not hard to win the UKC show, but I never got the papers for that dog. And that dog don't even live here anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the, the, the thing about it that makes it even worse is so since I couldn't get him on the phone, I called the UKC myself and they couldn't even find the breeding. And you know what I mean? On file anywhere. Yeah. So, you know, now it's like you said, it's not the end of the world. The dog isn't necessarily worthless. There's other routes that you can go. You know, you might have to go through another private registry and then you have a, a separate registered litter. 
Um, and then also, I don't know if AKC does this or ABDA. I don't know if they do this, but um, UKC now, uh, if you're after so many months and you don't register the dog and for so many months, like if you buy a puppy from someone and you don't register it for a year and then you try to go register it later, he wants to charge you $500 now. For it's a not, it, well, I stopped with UKC a few years ago. Um, but I know that it was pretty standard procedure. If you wait till after the dog's a year to register it, it's going to be a little bit more, but like $15. Yeah. yeah and see, 10, that's what 10, I remember. 10, right. 10 bucks, something like yeah, that. Yeah. I was talking to somebody who deals directly with uh, one of the guys on the board there. And he said, nah, dude, it's, if you wait after a year, they're charging you $500. I'm like, why? And how? Like for what? Because I, I didn't I didn't fill out my paperwork. Maybe I okay, I didn't breed my dog. I didn't do anything with him. I got I got the shit here, but you know, he's just a house dog. I'm not doing anything with him. You know, why do I, you know, I just didn't do it. So you're telling me now that I want to do it because maybe I want to breed, or maybe I just want to check out the pedigree that I have to pay you five hundred dollars. I mean, that's what I'm told. Now that may not be true, but that's what I was told. Uh, from someone who, you know, they ain't got no reason to make that shit up. But, you yeah, know, it's, it, you know, but I, I can see some shit like that because I also know that the UPPCC, um, if you come to them with a DNA test and no papers and, a, you know, something nice, you know, they'll put your dog in the system. You well, know? I mean, I, I even know. And so, like, my stature terrier came from Steadfast. <clears throat> and Steadfast is, like I've told you before, a historian on, on everything Staffordshire Bull Terrier, especially since it came here to the United States. My Staffordshire Bull Terrier goes back to Staffordshire Bull Terriers that were imported by Pete Sparks, the old game dog guy, American Pitbull Terrier game dog guy. There has been a lot of intermingling with APBTs and Staffordshire Bull Terriers since the influx of Staffordshire Bull Terriers in the, you know, 50s-ish. Um, a lot of people don't know this, and I think I might have even said it before. You could register your Staffordshire Bull Terrier. I know up in, at least until the early 2000s, because I called um, – with the ADBA as an American Pit Bull Terrier, if you had an AM staff in the pedigree of an ADBA Pit Bull, like let's just say you had a pit, ADBA dog and, and his granddad was an AM staff, AKC registered, there would be one star by its name. One star by an AKC dog. That's how you know, okay, that was an AM staff in the pedigree with the ADBA. Staffordshire Bull Terrier, you'd have two stars, right? Mm. They told me when I called that I could register my Staffordshire Bull Terrier as an American Pit Bull Terrier. Um, if, if you look at Eddie Eddington, who had Wanna Be a Whopper, which was, like I said, that American Bulldog, Dog Deaver Doe Cross, allegedly. He had a large line that was off of Whopper stuff, but he had a small line off of, it was called Willie Make It. And Willie Make It, there was a dog that was interjected into the line called Johnny Rotten. And Johnny Rotten was a Staffordshire Bull Terrier that came from the same kennel that my Staffordshire Bull Terrier came from. And um, like I said, I mean, so it, it's it, it, it's interesting to see how sometimes it, it seems like it just depends on who you can get on the phone. <laughs> you, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> who you can get on the phone. Yeah, you know, like you said with the press of deal, it's like that bank account right. is awful tempting. I'm sure. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. no you're, you're right about that. You, 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 I mean, it's like when I, um, you know, living, living in the DMV, Virginia is the only place you're allowed to have venomous reptiles legally. Well, I, I never lived in Virginia, 
but I've had plenty of venomous reptiles that I was not supposed to have. Um, but like you said, getting the right person on the phone, what it was, was I knew that nothing but inner city kids worked at Delta Dash Airport. They don't know shit about shit. Their job is to get a John Hancock on that paperwork and then bring me my package. That's it. You know what I mean? So I give them a VA address, get my fucking Cobra. You know what I mean? Now, luckily, I don't have to do that because I live in a state where I can legally have that shit. But, you know, I mean, you know, we all do shit. But, yes, like you said, you know, if you, you know, you know how to finesse the situation or you you think to my own ass guy might be a little soft, he might be a little green or, you know, he might want some green. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, well, look, if you do this, you know, I'll slide you this type of shit. I mean, obviously, we know that shit happens all the time. Um, you know, I think now. A lot of this shit, it's, 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 I don't know, dude, it, it's crazy. Um, like the, the amount of like, even here in this town that I have, there's a guy here. Um, he's got, I don't know what the fuck he has. Honestly, when I first met him months ago, I thought he had a Staffordshire Bull Terrier because that's what the fuck his dog looks like to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's got the half pricked ears. It's got that square head. Um, the, the body, it's not, it's more kind of resembles the pocket bully that I had, but a little bit more athletic. But when I met him, he told me that they told him that it was an American bulldog. Now, this is a almost solid black dog. It's got a little yeah. bit of white stripe right here. Uh, a little bit of white here, you know, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't solid black American bulldogs, but man, where I'm living, man, you ain't finding no shit like that around here. Yeah. And um, <laughs> what's good, what's good, royalty? Um, so when I met him, like I said, he told me that the dog was an American bulldog. And I said, you mean American bully? And I, I think that's what they might have told him because he's a little off, you know, you can say. Um Mentally, not like, I mean, he, he, he's, he's, he can comprehend. I had, you know, conversations with him, but I think maybe he got something, you know, miscommunication was that's an American bully and not an American bulldog. Because yeah. I ain't never seen an American bulldog in my life that looks like that. Well, well, even before, you know, the American bully was taking off, I remember going to American Bulldog shows and people would call them am bullies, mm -hmm. you, you know, and then you take the, you, I mean, it, it's weird how a breed's name will change over time. Like the American Bulldog before that was with the ARF called the American Pit Bulldog and mm -hmm. they changed the name because of too much confusion. Um, and I'm sure that some of those dogs probably got registered into the ADBA as well. You, 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 right. you, you, you know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. But I, I saw a comment about Camelot line. I've only had a dog that was a quarter Camelot or maybe 12.5%. Do I feel like, and they said that, Camelot was pure. The original Camelot was pure. It might have been, but I do feel like that drastically pure stuff came to a screeching halt once the Duke and Golden Bud came around. Um, you know, there was always talk of, you know, these two 60 pound dogs produced a 100 pound dog that looked awful matched to feet or a 110 pound dog. Um, I always heard that there was dog, uh, dog deeper doe. Now, if there was or wasn't, I don't know. But he looked awful suspect to me. If you I go mean, look, look at, at what's that one dog? The Duke. Um, fuck. What's that dog? He's dead now. The Hulk. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, that dog looks every bit of French Mastiff. Bore, I see. Bore, in my opinion, I see Bordeaux and Neo. All through well, that shit, but well, he's he's got Whopper in him a good bit, and Whopper was supposedly half French Mastiff and half American Bulldog, and then whatever else was in him, because there was other stuff, regardless if it was Bulldog, or whatever. Right. I never, I never. I mean, I'm just being honest. 
I never really cared for how the dog looked. He wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah, me, me either. With, I mean, and, and no offense to that dog. It just wasn't my style of what I think – I was wanting an American bully, but apparently a lot of other people did. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I mean, I, I think the the American bully is a perfect example of the the human ego at work. Um, you know, I, in my opinion, I think that the standard dog should. You know, I don't. I don't know. I guess I don't think any of them should be called bullies, uh, especially not. Really, none of them. In my, I don't think any of. Them. I think the XLs, the XLs, and the XXLs. That needs to be like the American Mastiff or the American Band Dog, and then those exotics need to be. I don't know what the fuck you to call them dogs, and you know them in the pockets need to be called something else, and then the standard, the standard should just maybe just be a fucking standard. I don't, I don't even know a name to give it because I'm just like, dude, it's a pit bull. It's a gang line into a show line. Like, it's it's a pit bull. Well, on paperwork it is, but we know in reality, right now, it's it's not. Oh, oh yeah, it's, now, not anymore, right? I in mean, the beginning, it, right. It, it, it would be more debatable to call it a non-working Mastiff. I mean, band dog. I mean, well, right, like I was saying, the one yeah. I bought in Colorado did not fit the genetics of what a standard American bully was originally supposed to be. Amstaff and the pit bull, you know, he told me, he said English bulldog and Amstaff. Well, that's not an American bully by standard, by genetic standard, um, you know, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy because, and then at the same time, like I said, the dog, it just, it's, it's just so gimmicky because, and, and that's because, you know, it's the, obviously the dogs aren't doing this. It's the people behind them is there's just like no end to sight to ever become really consistent because, I don't know, maybe the dog just can't be consistent and you only get so many runs with. I mean, I don't do it's, it's There's so many questions that come up when you well, talk about this breed. I, I You know, it can be diced a hundred different ways, but you can't really name breeds that are established that have three different classes within the same breed like and right. I, I you know i'm more of a fan if, if if it was up to me would be one class for showing dogs right that's whatever you want to make the standard 16 to 19 inches and whatever weight just keep it there one class but when you have all these dogs, you have a pocket class, a standard class, a classic class, an XL class, and they can all interbreed, you're always going to get inconsistent. Right, and they I all mean, look different. You, you, you're already seeing the XL breeders segregate themselves. You're not seeing an XL breeder breeding to a pocket dog right. on a massive scale. You're not seeing a classic breed to a... Uh, 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 an, an extreme dog on a massive scale because that's not what they're going for. They're not going, they're going for a consistency look. So, you know, I, I, I don't know because you are talking about a relatively young breed. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything prematurely, but yeah, I don't think, you know, with, with the worldwide popularity and um the just the sheer number of dogs worldwide i don't know how you get a consistent look with such variation in sizes i, right. just, I mean I, I don't you take a take you know you look at what do we have the only dog that you could really the only other breed you could really compare it to on that level would be the schnauzer the but mini. they're separate. They're separated by breeds. And, and right, and that's all I'm going to say. They're they they look just Oof. different different size versions of themselves. You know what I mean? Like you look at that dog, and you know it's a mini schnauzer. You know it's a standard schnauzer. You know it's a giant schnauzer. Oof. You know you see an exotic bully for the first time, and most people are like, you know, I me. Mean, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Even now, you know. Then you see the pocket bully, and you're like, what is that? A bulldog cross? And then you see the standard bully. And then you're kind of like, what is that, a souped-up pit bull? You know, and I'm just speaking in layman terms. And then you see this yeah. big dog, 
this 100 plus pound dog and you're like man what kind of mastiff is that <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like you can't even really get any consistent you know direction for it but like i said you look at this look at the schnauzer you know what that dog is you yeah. know what it is no matter how big or how small the standards have said it it's no it's no mistaking it you know what it is and you know i i wonder who even took everything away from what the original project was to get to where we are now like because because i remember look i was in i was doing some contracts in cincinnati some chef contracts i think it was 2018 if i'm not mistaken and um i was actually looking for a presser but i ended up getting an old english bulldog I, let me say that in quotes because it wasn't a real one. It was an English, it was a Merle English Bulldog male into an old English Bulldog female, which I didn't know that at the time. Um, but I remember when I was doing my search, um, you know, I kind of in my head, I was I'm like, listening. I can't get a Pressa. If I can't get a Pressa, then I want to get something that's kind of more towards the Hermes old English Bulldog look. So, I started, you know, I was really looking for, for mutts. You know, I was looking for mutts. I was looking for bulldog crosses and things like that. And I come across this lady, um, and she had a litter of English bulldogs into American Pit Bull Terriers. Um, and she was telling me, I mean, not into American Pit Bull Terriers, went to, into Amstaff, and she was telling me, like, oh, yeah, man, you know, they got papers, and you can get papers on them, and right now, you know, registration is open for this long and for this price. So you can pretty much put anything together. And, and this is when that, and this was, you know, so this is 2018, 2000, 2017, 2018. I think it was 2018. Um, so she's just, you know, going on, you know, like, yeah, you know, no, no, I get, I'm going to get papers. The, 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 dog, the litter has papers. And I'm like, how the fuck do you got papers on these dogs? Unless it's from like the NAPCR or DRA or somebody like that. I, I understand that. I was like, how, how are you getting, she's like, oh, well, the ABKC, they register them. Right now it's like open registry. So you can pretty much put anything together. And if it's got bully or bulldog in the makeup, it's an American bully. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> she's like, so, you know, I didn't, I didn't end up buying a pup from her, but I was just like, dude, that's crazy that I was like, I've, no. ne I've never and you, I mean, you know, I've never heard that. I've heard that ironically with the UKC. The UKC, when they started registering American bullies in 2013, I could take a Connie Corso and breed it to. Uh, maybe a, maybe it was the UKC. Yeah, not UK, the UKC. UKC started that in 2013. Okay, maybe that's because, what it was because I, I called I called them and I was like, wait, I can go buy. Can, I was just blatantly honest. I said, I can go buy a Connie Corso and breed it to an American Staffshire Terrier and register them as first generation uh, American bullies. And they said, absolutely, you can. As so long maybe as that's it, what she said was UKC and not ABKC. I can't, it's been, it's been some years, you know, I smoke a lot, but I, I remember it was one of those registries that she said, um, because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even really know that UKC was even dealing with, American bullies, honestly, but at the same time, 2018, I wasn't even really familiar with the ABKC or anything the, American. The UKC that. is the one, I mean, me and you've discussed this, UKC is the grandfather registry of every American bully because they were all registered as American Pitbull Terriers. Well, right, well, that's right, right, right. Because I remember when I told when I bought it, 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 it took me a long time to cross over from UKC to ABKC completely. But so it was like, saying. yeah, but I mean, I've been doing it for probably 10 years, 15 years now. And, you know, it's like, why register these dogs as pit bulls when they're American bullies? Right. You know, regardless if the paperwork's the same, like, you're not going to have an, a UKC actual show pit bull person come and buy your dog for their breeding stock or for a pet with UKC papers. People 
you know, ABKC has made a lot of good decisions when it came to, you know, just promoting the breed, getting this registry started. I mean, th- there's a lot of positive stuff that the ABKC has done for the, the American Bully and the, uh, how ABKC, nobody's perfect, but they've really done a good job when it comes to promotion, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, I mean, you basically got, all of the American bully people to register your dogs with the ABKC. And I'd say 75 to 80% of them in that transition period drop UKC papers because it's like, why do I dual register dogs? My dog, this is a place I can go show dogs. This is a place where I'm just paying for paperwork. And I think that once people realized that ABKC wasn't going to close overnight, because that's, I mean, uh, I'll be honest, that's what I, I, I'd i worried about. I was like, ABKC is only a fucking year old, right. two years old at the time. Like, I'm not going to burn the fucking boats just quite yet, right. in a manner of speaking, you know, uh, and um but but they've done it, man. And well, um, I mean, the breed became so popular worldwide so fast. You know what I mean? It was just like, and, well, and that being the parent club for the breed, you know, like, and he was really like, "Hey, I'm the proprietor of this shit." <laughs> started the original project. When's the last? When's the last time you saw a real game dog? Shit. Oh man. I know there's a couple in town, but probably about a year ago. Yeah, I mean, and how many did we see as children? Oh, and man, I, mean, I had a yard full of them. Everybody Teenage. I knew had them. Teenagers. <laughs> and now everybody has American bullies. Yeah. Or, you know, and and I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. It's probably a little bit of both. Um, But I do feel like you deal with a dog like an American bully, it's a lot more manageable than having – a box dog, you know, to the general person. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, once he, you know, once he saw those numbers coming in, I mean, dude, I mean, he made, you know, all those registries, any registry that is up and maintaining from the, the NAPR, um, the, the, NA, the NAPRC to fucking, AKC, anybody running those registries right now, they're fucking millionaires off of yeah. printing papers. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what they do, and that's what you're talking about. You know, they advertise. Like I, I will give Dan the credit. Like he, a day, like he definitely, he definitely got out there, and and I mean, but I, I, if you create a breed and then you put a, your own registry on it, you better get out there and fight for that shit, like you said, because we've seen registries come and go. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to have a registry. Oh, they get this dog. Oh, I'm gonna start. A, I'm gonna start a so and so club, like the DCCA. You know how many people in the press of world ain't never even heard of the DCCA? You know what I mean? <laughs> they never heard of the DCCA, but these be the same people arguing Pressa versus Dogo Canaria, but you never heard of the DCCA. So you know, people, you know, registries or, or or breed clubs like that come along, and then they, you know, they get drowned out for either just a lack of advertising and really pushing because I think a lot of people think with the registry, I guess in the nineties, and you might be able to test to this, everybody kind of wanted, like if you were really in to your canines and doing things properly, as far as going to shows, whether it was in the country, out of the country, and you're just doing, you know, just that was your life. Everybody wanted their dogs to be registered under everything if they could akc dra ukc you know what i mean like they wanted all yeah, these I, I mean i have you know the foundation dog of my bully stuff memphis he was an akc am staff at a year old i took him to a ukc judge got him evaluated he became a ukc pit bull i paid I never registered him. Did I register him ADBA? I don't think I did. But 
I also registered him as an ABKC American bully because what do American bullies come from? Mm -hmm. Amstaff. Right. So, you know, I have one dog registered under three different breeds that are supposedly all three the same breeds. You can down register an Amstaff to a UKC or ADBA dog. You can't do it with ADBA. They have Amstaff now. But you can also, if you want to, register it with ABKC as American Bullet, which I do believe open registration is a good thing because the gene pool in the American Bully isn't that big. I mean, name, you can't name 10 actual bloodlines. There's a lot of people out there claiming bloodlines. I, I honestly kind of believe that when you have a breed that's 20, 25 years old, you you're really not old enough to have blood true true bloodlines um and i say that and i can tell the difference between a razor's edge dog and a gaudy dog but name other other bloodlines i mean yes you have some xl stuff you have some pocket stuff but a lot of that stuff is just not the xls but the other stuff is just a, a a mix match of Razor's Edge and Gotti Dog. So there's right. well, not a lot which, of which at the time were still being called pit bull terriers. Yeah, oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I had a I had a Razor's Edge dog. It was AKC Amstaff. You know what I mean? And and so, but yes, they were called American pit bull terriers. When I used to get into I, it. I used to get so mad, like arguing with people, like you. Stupid motherfucker, it's not a you know what I mean? Like, but you can't tell them that. I mean, you can tell them that, but they're not comp they're not hearing that yeah. shit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, well, that's not a pit bull. That's that's this or that's this, or you know, that that dog's a mutt, man. There's no way, you know what I mean? But they're not trying to hear. You know, I I even had, you know, uh I had a thing I told you I had a guy pull a gun on me over a press of canario because somebody sold him a shit dog. Like, why when you pull the gun on the guy that sold you that dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're getting mad yeah. at me because I stopped you randomly and asked you about your dog, and he was like, "Oh, it's a Pressa," and I'm like, "No, nah, that ain't no Pressa." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, his first thing was like most small-minded men was, "Well, looking at me, he's like, well, you don't even got a dog." I'm like, "Well, how, how did one? How the fuck do you even know that? And two, what fucking difference does that make?" It's like the guys on social media. You make a comment on a post, you make a, a valid point or a strong point, but you may misspell a word and they know it that you made a valid point to their comment. So the only thing they do is say, Oh, that's why your fucking grammar is bad. Yeah, you, you didn't spell two the right way. Right. <laughs> they, they don't have no ammo. You know, they don't have no real ammo to fire at you. But yeah, you know, and I was just telling him and I was explaining, I think I was telling you before, telling this on on, on the channel before. And I got on the phone, you know, then he told me where he got the dog from. And I knew the guy and I got him on speakerphone. And that's when the guy got mad <laughs> talking about killing me and shit. But I, uh, I, I, I was uh, out one night, a uh, buddy of mine on the bar and Main Street. A lot of people always walk dogs. And I was sitting there one night. And this had to be 15 years ago. And I saw this guy walk this dog by and the dog looked familiar. And I walked outside and talked to the guy. And first thing he said was, you couldn't afford this dog. And uh, he said, I didn't ask how much he was. I was just curious where you, you know, <laughs> he, he's a nice looking dog. Where, where'd you get him from? And uh, he said, da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, well, who's he off of? And it was a breeding that I helped my buddy do. Right. Get the breeding done. And, and I was just like, what a fucking tool bag. You know? Yeah, I've had, yeah. No, yeah I've, run, I've had that shit happen in the reptile world. Where motherfuckers say some shit. I'm like, dude, I'm the one that bred those fucking snakes that you got and, right and it's like number two. I know my buddy didn't charge you twenty five hundred for the motherfuckers because. Oh, of course, it's always you know, stores <laughs> always gonna get fantastical when yeah. you know it, it's man. You know, you you go when you when you've really been in it 
from a young age, and I know a lot of people say that, like, you know, I've been around dogs my whole life. Well, that don't really mean shit to me that you've been around them your whole life. Is this your life? Is this really a part of your yeah. everyday fucking life, whether it's whatever, you know, whatever kind of animals you fucking like? You know, like, we're to the point where, you know, you, 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 you've you gone through books, you used to sit at the library, you used to talk to people or try to get people to talk to you. Some would, some wouldn't. You're doing the legwork. You know, you're running up on people when you, you know, you could be doing something important. Somebody walk by with a dog you ain't never seen. And next thing you know, you're out, you're across the street about to lose your job, <laughs> you know, because you're trying to find out what kind of fucking dog that is. You know what That's I mean? Right. That's somebody who's really been here and... You know, and, you know, stories like that, what you said, like guys like that, like we get running this shit like that. Oh, yeah, I paid $20,000 for this dog. Like, I, I, I remember <laughs> because the bar I was at, uh, my buddy owned and he actually had a dog for me and he'd always bring him and he'd sit behind the bar. And uh, this guy, this dude said one time I was sitting there and he said, white boy what do you know about pit bulls and I, and, and I mean obviously i was at a bar and i was young and fucking been drinking some and i said buddy i forgot more than you'll ever know <laughs> yeah you run into a lot of clowns man and, and it's good because it keeps you on your toes and it and it, it definitely you know creates because it's got to be a fucking divide you know that, or 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 better better term uh, is a as a balance. Um, I was talking to someone today about uh, naturalistic versus bioactive enclosures for reptiles and amphibians. Um, I don't know if you saw the post that I that I had up on my story, but I was like, you know, you you you, you got to have a balance, but at the same time, you also have to keep common sense in mind is that you can't do bioactive in your house it's not possible you know if you don't have cages set up outside somewhere year round that's the only way you're going to be able to do bioactive but you have some people like this like the guy in the bar you know you don't know what you think you know man you know like hey i do have bioactive and this is why and you know da, 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 da. And i'm like do you do you know how many layers are beneath the grass <laughs> working layers of of clay and different types of dirt and different parasites and you know different types of bugs. so you're, you're you're basically talking about putting your 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 reptile or an aquatic amphib i mean amphibian into a living environment right in a basically dummy down for me is you're putting it into a living terrarium right, right. with real plants just its own little ecosystem it right yeah that just sounds a little too hard to yeah you there's you can do you can there's levels of it you know what i mean like i guess some people would consider what i have here these three on the top maybe semi bioactive i i just i just refer to it as naturalistic but the reason they say, oh, it's bioactive is because I got isopods and springtails in there. You know what I mean? Like working through the soil and, and you know, eating some of the poop and, you know, decaying matter. So, yeah, that, I mean, that is it is active. But at the same time, living is also another word or natural or organic. All those words can be used. Um, and that's how I, I, I look at it like that. Like it's but when you start talking about truly bioactive you know, where you're going, like, you don't even, you go to zoos and they don't even have bioactive. Yeah. You know, unless you live in somewhere where the weather is su suitable or sustainable for reptiles year round and you have like Tom Crutchfield or Camp Ken, you've set up all your pins outside for your monitors or iguanas and they never come inside, that's bioactive. And that's the only way you're going to get it because some hydro stones and some cocoa soil and some plants because that's basically what i got here minus the hydro stones so um, you basically have to live tampa or below yeah to in order if you in order to have to really go oh i've got by and, and be outdoors you know because there's there's just so much going on in the soil but you have you know and some people understand that and, and that's and that's where the that those two terms started kind of clashing like 
naturalistic versus bioactive, but some people have a different version of what naturalistic is, you know, where everything is, everything is from nature, but they may not have any isopods or uh, springtails or any cleanup crew or anything like that. Uh, but my, the point of my post was also was talking about balance and doing things to the fullest dogs, snakes, whatever, but it's recreating the environment is one thing, but you also have to recreate the mentality. You're dealing with reptiles in the wild. They don't eat frozen dog mice and quail. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't eat every Sunday. You know what I mean? So that's not, so as naturalistic or as bioactive as you want to call your shit, it's not working because you're, you're still, you've got too much of a hand. You've got this thing's on a better schedule than you are most likely. Oh, yeah, they're not they're they're not putting a caribou into a polar bear cage and letting it kill it. Right. Once see, a week. I don't, right. I don't believe in uh, frozen thawed unless I just can't get what I need. Then I'll keep shit on hand because obviously I don't want to starve my animal. But eighty percent of what this every a hundred percent of what these geckos eat are are you know my red runner roaches. And then, you know, this guy, he's been on birds since he's been with me. He's, he's never had a rat in his fucking life. Um, well, not here. I'm saying his life, but I don't know what he ate in Africa. But um, it's been all different types of birds, ducks, quails, guinea fowl, you know, like grouse, like whatever I can get. Um, but 80% of that shit has also been moving. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, one, that's the whole reason I got into this shit was to watch them kill and eat shit. That's why I got an alligator snapping turtle and a common yeah, snapping I mean, turtle. So, <laughs> but, you know. I, I just don't understand it. And, you know, I see some of the same things in the canine world as the reptile world as far as, like, how we used to do things back in the 90s to how we do things now. It seems like we were putting in more effort back then than we were now. It's like I remember coming up in the 90s when I first was allowed to keep, you know, my first lizard or tarantula. Like, you know, I, I obviously like there wasn't a ton and ton of information. You know, you get those little black and white books from the pet store for like nine dollars or so. And, you know, on your first tarantula and you go home and read it a thousand fucking times. Um, and you know, I wanted to have the best setups that I could, you know, so I would go out and get dirt and sticks and, you know, or rep to bark, you know, whatever, whatever I thought was going to be the best to make this animal feel at home because he is in a prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? He is ultimately yeah. in the prison. And back in the 80s and 90s, everything was wild call. You know what I mean? Everything was wild call. So, you know, these animals, you're putting them in this box and now they're like, the fuck is going on but you know some of them acclimate and some of them drop the fuck off but i remember almost everybody that i know was doing their best to replicate the environment and even for the dogs do you, do you want to know why I, I, me personally because you know you and i are the same age um i feel because we grew up in a time when there was not a dependable internet and we relied on literature. Yeah, you had to go do the legwork. You, you had to go to the library. You had yeah. to go to pet stores. You had to go to whatever. A call and order. Yeah. Order to yeah. get your the, yeah. um, the whereas, books. Whereas now you can just join a naturalistic thing on Facebook and be fed propaganda one way or the other. And and I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not in that fucking hemisphere. But the information is so much more easily available, but also the wrong information is so much more easily available. So you could get fed into the wrong pyramid scheme when it came to information, comes to information. Whereas, like, I've got one of my, you know, if we're talking about, like, possessions, like, I probably have a dog book collection on bully breeds and 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 molossers, I, I don't know how much it's worth. Five, ten thousand dollars might oh, be sure. worth might be yes. worth two, but it's the one thing that I treasure when it comes to just 
things that I have outside of, you know, just like tangible thing. Like right. that's my dog book collection. I've been collecting right. since I was a child. And I, I, I and I do feel a, a little bad for the people that are younger than us because a lot of books are hard to come by. Like good oh, luck yeah. trying to good luck trying to find Carl Samancy's books. And if you are, you're going to pay a pretty penny. Good luck trying to find, you know, old sporting dog journals. Well, you, or... can, you can take some of the books out, like what I've been doing, because of what you said is very true, uh, is the in, the online internet library. Like, you can yeah. get on there and make a free account and then, you know, check the book out online. You know, and then I just screenshot what I need. But, yeah, no, you some of those books, are they're out of print. You know, you can't get them anymore. Um, you know, like I had all those Stratton books, all the Semency books and some of, you know, Mike Ho uh, Hoffman, you know, and I'd sit there and I'm sure you did too with my highlighter and a black pen, you know, taking different notes. Like all of my books were fucking highlighter, all my tarantula books, all my snake books. Like, and then I have, I still got some of my fucking notes, man, like in storage. Yeah. Like I got shit here cause I love to write, you know, I just got stacked and stacks and stacks of papers and fucking manuscripts when I was trying to get published and um, you know so that shit like you said that shit was important that shit was more important to me after I realized what I was really making a record you know of, of hard labor because that's what we were we were putting in hard fucking labor and that's why my, my whole point was is was you know we were putting these we we're putting so much effort into the enclosures back in the day and then somebody went to Walmart, I guess, or somewhere, Kmart, and figured out a plastic tub. And and there's nothing wrong with that because I use them. I use them for feeders. I use them for quarantine. But you can, if you, you, I could set my plastic tubs up the same way I got this shit set up here. Um, but people got lazy because the tubs were cheaper. And then they stopped using certain things. And then, so then it just became like with the tree python, some of the tree python people, it's just newspaper. You know, then that when that came into play, the newspaper thing, I remember, I'll never forget it. Like the newspaper, people send me pictures. And I'm like, then why you got newspaper in there? Uh, you know, like, ah, oh, you know, just, eat, you know, it's cheap, easy cleanup. You know, you go to the, you know, that's when you had to put the quarter in and pull the, um, the, the, the paper machine. And they yes, take yes, all the papers yes, out. Yeah, take all the papers they out. Take all the fucking papers out. And then, they, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, I got, you know, I got substrate rather than keep buying reptobark. And, you know, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like for quarantine, yeah, that's great for quarantine. But I was like, I don't, I wouldn't want to fucking live on that shit. But a lot of those tree python guys, and tree pole guys, you go to their pages and it's just PVC pipe, puppy pad. That's it. You know, in a tub. Like, damn, dude, we've been keeping these animals in captivity since, like, the 60s. And, you know, same thing with some of these dog breeds. We've been keeping some of these breeds for decades and, well, for fucking hundreds of years to decades, some of these newer breeds. And then we're still having and some of the same dumb arguments and dumb issues with the dogs or with the snakes that we were having 15, 20 years ago, which is it's crazy to me. But at the same time, when you talk to some of these newer people, it's like they've evolved so much over us. At least that's what they think. And some of them are really into it like we were, because obviously, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but it's not like it used to be. And it's like you said, because if you actually gave a fuck about what you were doing, it was like clocking in. How could in. you like. If I uh, obsessed, right, obsessed been obsessed with pit bull type dogs since I was a child obsessed and if someone isn't obsessed you shouldn't get into it you know and and maybe you shouldn't get into it if you are obsessed but all I'm saying is if you got to if you're gonna do it do it to the best of your ability man like you know if if I had you know, you're talking about the tree python, I believe. Well, when I have, if I had tree pythons and I wanted people to come, come over and just say I had it in my living room, just, just as a, a pet, like, like not a breeder, but just a pet. 
do I really want PVC pipe and fucking paper for the right, droppings right. or you whatever? Just, you're like, living that, that, a showcase, that, I guess. That, that doesn't look good for a, 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 a showcase live art kind of deal, you know? Right. Yeah, you got this beautiful animal <laughs> yeah. and it's set up, costs $10. But you, you pay, so you pay $2,000 for the snake and then $10 to have. Like I said, that shit is cool for quarantine. And, you know, people people took an approach and did certain things with it. But in my opinion, it's still lacking for the most part. Like, you know, like actually one of my friends um, in, in Long Island, uh, VC Reptiles, like he did a really good job, you know, after he bought his house. He even talked, we've been talking about what he was going to do, his setups and all that for years. You know, and he's like, man, I, you know, once I move, this is when I had my old reptile channel. I used to beg him to come on. He was like, no, nah, man. He's like, I, I will. He's like, but you got to wait till I move. And I got everything set up and, you know, I want to show everything. And, you know, he went in and he did his thing. You know what I mean? Like he got the right plants that he wanted. Um, and, you know, he keeps true pythons and some other stuff too. And he, he's he got a, a basically a mixed approach to it. You know, he's got live plants in there. He's got vines. He does use the puppy pads, which I understand. That's easy cleanup. It's a tree python. It's not on the ground. You know what I mean? So no problem. I do the same shit just like he did. You know, I'll get me some live plants and vines and, you know, whatever else I want to put in there, misting machines and all that shit and, and, and do it like that. But then you see some of these other guys who are like the experts or the big names, the 500,000 follower people like Kevin at Nerd, uh, you know, he's keeping a 15 foot snake in an enclosure this size that's literally this fucking tall. You know what I mean? And that's no fucking exaggeration. And this is and this is one of the big respected names in the reptile game. So it's like, dude, you should know better. I remember yeah. when you started, 1994. You know, I remember when you first hit Reptile Magazine in the back of the advertisements. Nobody knew who really anybody was unless you had an interview in that magazine or you lived in the same fucking area. But, uh, but yeah, it's, we just, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we know we're living in different times, but luckily there are a few of the newcomers that respect that shit and understand yeah. And it's probably because they're they're coming up under people like me and you, or maybe their parents, you know, just gave them those good morals and values to be like, look, dude, you know, if you really, it's like you were saying, like, dude, if you really were wanted that shit, you really had to put in the work back in the day. Now you can just, eh, I'll save yeah. it, for later. you know what I mean? I'll yeah. save it for later. There's a hundred, there's a hundred Staffordshire Bull Terrier breeders. There's a thousand Pressive breeders. I'll get you know back then. You know, you'd be sitting there looking at that staffy bull, not knowing when you're going to see one of these dogs, yeah. or if you're going to have the money. Then, you know, we, you know, these, you know, these new motherfuckers, they got looks like I'm, I'm like, God damn, these motherfuckers got liquid like that. Like, what? How do you have money like this? Like, this shit yeah. is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, you didn't know, so you like, you're taking a chance. Like, fuck it, I'm gonna spend my last seven hundred dollars on this dog because I don't know when I'm going to see one again. Like, you know how long. I've looked for Staffordshire Bull Terriers to have never owned one from all the different animals that I've imported and owned. It's crazy. I, I The first Staffordshire Bull Terrier I ever saw in person, I mean, I, I became obsessed with them the same time I became obsessed with the fucking Pressa in 1992. You know, I'm, I'm like you. I like game dogs. You know what I mean? I like sporting dogs. So I remember I saw it in the same book. It was in the same magazine the same dog encyclopedia that i saw the press in and i'm sure you've seen this dog a million times a little fawn dog half prick ears in that book just looking stout as shit man i was like man i, I want that too you know what i mean yeah. and i looked and looked and looked and i would call and i could never afford anything you know at that time i even got 500 bucks so and so was wanting a thousand plus shipping i'm like fuck man um you know, looking locally, and then you'd see something, like I was just saying, you see something in the paper, trading post, and you'd call them, and they'd have two left, and then you'd be trying to get it, you know, you might not drive at the time, so now you're trying to get a ride yeah. somewhere, and then you either don't get a ride, or by the time you get there, they're fucking gone, or they don't look good, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we, we have to look at, if anything, looking for dogs. 
a black and white picture of a couple puppies on an ad. Yeah, oh yeah. If you're lucky. If if you're in the same thing in the reptile world, dude, from from 1991 until fuck. Probably until fucking King Snake hit, which was well, I can't even remember. But it was it was it was it was no, it was even King Snake because I wasn't even using King Snake then. But basically, what I'm saying is, I didn't. I'd say ninety five percent of the snakes that I bought out of Reptile Magazine, I never saw them before I purchased them because there wasn't an option. It just it, it just wasn't an option. You call them. And you know, well, one you you and you have a long fucking process because you got to call them, get them to send you a price list, uh, you know, and, and hopefully that shit ain't on a uh, Friday because then you ain't gonna get that price list till fucking Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you live. Then you get your price list and you're going through it, looking to see what they have. Either that or you got to call them direct, like, hey, you got carpet python? I do. How much? This month, okay, let me get two. So you don't got a credit card or bank transfer. Then you got to get a money order. Then you got to send the money order to the breeder or to the to the seller. They get it, then they send you the animal. If not, you just want to see a price list and make a decision because they're not going to run down every fucking animal on that price list with you. So you get this price list after two or three days. You see what you want on there. You know, like, oh, man, I want to get this fucking red tail Peruvian red tail boa. He's got 5.3, you know, five males, three females. So you call him up after, you know, it's been almost a week of you waiting to get the price list. And now you've spent hours looking over it. And then you call. And he's like, yeah, we're sold out of those. And you're not getting to look at them because there was no pictures to see. There was nothing to yeah. see. There yeah, yeah. To see. So, well, I remember I used to get dog puppy pictures and parent pictures through the mail, you know, yeah. and, and they'd be on Polaroids. I mean, yeah. I still have some. Yeah. Um, VHS. So, remember, they would, give you, they would send you VHSs of yeah, your puppy, yeah. like once, you know, up like maybe what, once every 10 weeks up until yeah. the time it was ready. Or I mean, once every what? Because it well, it depends on who you were buying from, but they would send you from like birth. And then like four weeks, then like eight weeks, and like twelve weeks, and then by that time you should be ready to, you know, for the dog to be coming to you. But yeah, Polaroids, VHSs, yeah. with reptiles. Yeah. I was telling them ninety-five percent of the animals that I bought when I first started, if it wasn't from a pet store, I did not see the animal. So I I didn't know what the fuck was coming. If it was going to look good, if it wasn't going to look good, I I had just had to. Hope for the best. Send them my money. You know, my shit. They get my money order. And then, you know, I got something. This is almost like a fucking three-week process to get a snake yeah. in the mail. Because you got to, like I said, you got to call them. Get the prop, get the, get the, um, the, <laughs> the, the price list. So that's like a week almost. That's like three, four days right there. Um, depending on when they send it out. Then you got to look over it. And then you find what you want. Get your money order or how are you going to pay it, pay them once they get that, then they send it out. So if it's a money order, that's going to be another two, three days before they get that money order. So then they get it, then they put your shit in the mail the next day, depending on when they get the money order. Because if they get it on a Thursday or a Friday, you ain't getting shit. So it's got to be on a Tuesday, a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting till the next fucking week to get your animal. <laughs> that you've already paid for. So and then that you haven't seen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you haven't you don't know what kind of condition it is. You get this thing and then it dies on you 24 hours later. You know how many times that shit happened to me? At least with the pup, at least with the pups, you could if you were if they were local, you could drive and go see them and then kind of make make your decision. But with the yeah. reptiles. 90% of that shit, well, I would say 70% of that shit was coming out of Florida and the rest of that shit mainly was coming out of California uh, at the time before Colorado kind of got in the mix. But Florida was like the main, Florida, Colorado, and California <coughs> main hubs. And yeah, you, 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 you didn't get to see shit. 
or that shit would come there and you know you don't know what those motherfuckers are doing at that facility with those animals you know you just and you don't think about it at that time you're young you just want something same thing you want you just want a dog because you've been looking at these books you bought this book like a dumbass you feel bad you feel dumb as hell you bought this book you read it a million fucking times and you can't even go get the fucking dog for whatever reason <laughs> like yeah. You know what I mean? Like I know you know that feeling. And anybody who's really been in this shit, you have to you have to know that feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to. You feel like a complete like asshole. Like fuck, man. I'm sick of looking at this damn book. That's right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh man. You've read. You know every word in that book, front to back. To you know what I mean? Like you open, you grab the book, and it just opens to certain pages because you've opened it so many fucking times. Uh, I mean, and, but you go in the backyard, and there ain't no dogs out there. Well, is anything new going on in press the world? Ah, uh, not that I know of. Um, the same little bullshit beef that's always uh, that's happening. Hold on, give me a second, kind. Hey, let's 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 pick up next week. I'm yeah. I mean, it's I'm, an hour and forty five. I didn't even realize we were going that long. So that's no, good. you're you're fine. I've just been doing stuff at the house all day. Hold on. No, you're good, dude. Like I said, we've been going for almost two hours, man. So I was I was thinking we might only went for an hour, but no, it's all good. So everybody who tuned in, who will tune in, as always, we appreciate y'all, the sponsors for insurance and graphic designs and everything else, you know, your real estate and all that shit will be in there. Um, and uh, obviously D was here for a little while, so we'll have him on there as well. We'll see y'all next Saturday. Uh, don't know what the topic will be, but uh, peace. <laughs>